Hey guys, it's Jeff for MadHatterReef.com and today we are going to be taking a look at auto top-off systems. Um, I have not used an auto top-off system in any of my systems yet and I'm kind of getting sick of lugging water around all the time. So I thought I'd make things a little bit easier for myself and start using them. They're pretty simple, simplistic uh, devices. The main aspect of an auto top off system is the float switch. This is the float switch right here. And when an aquarium is full, that's, this little float will be at the top. And as water evaporates, it will slowly drop down. And it is wired to an extension cord. And that extension cord has a pump plugged into it and when that valve drops down it kicks the pump on and sends fresh water into the aquarium topping it off so it really takes a lot of um, maintenance out of filling up your tank all the time um, I know my 90 gallon aquarium probably uses probably about three to four gallons of evaporated water a week so putting one of these to use will be three to four gallons of RODI water a week that I won't have to log around anymore. So let's get started. So this part's pretty simple. All I'm going to do is drill a hole into a PVC cap and attach the float switch inside that cap. Um, this is going to do two different things for you. One, it's going to make it watertight um, and secondly it's going to hold it in place so it's not bumping around. But that's one of the main things that I've found um, through different types of setups that I was coming up with was that you really needed that float switch to stay put and not move around very much. Right here I'm just threading the electrical wire through the cap. I was going the wrong way there for a second. Um, and then putting the float switch inside the hole that I pre-drilled. Now I'm going to add some super glue to it. You could use uh, an aquarium sealant for this as well, but I figured super glue would probably work a lot better. It would be airtight and also uh, hold it in place. And I'm just holding it together, uh, twisting it, make sure I get the glue on all surfaces. And that's pretty much it. I gave it probably about no, two days to dry. Alright, for the extension cord prep, um, I'm not actually going to show or demonstrate the way I stripped this wire because I don't have the proper tools to do the job and I'm not going to show you the improper way that I did it. Um, I'll leave it to your imagination. So what you're going to want to do is separate these two cords, cut into one of them, leaving the other one solid, full, complete, whatever you want to call it. Then you're going to strip about an inch off from each side. And then what you're going to do later on in part two, I will show you how I put them back together and spliced in the auto top off switch. So that's all I got for you guys this week. Um, there will be more to come. I got part two pretty much already in the mix as it is right now. I just didn't want to make this video too long. Um, I definitely want to give you guys a big thank you. Uh, I appreciate everything that you do for me, your views, uh, your support for my family. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, you guys don't know how much you mean to me. And I will be back with another video as soon as I can. See you guys next time. All right, bye.